Shodan is a search engine that indexes nearly every device directly connected to the internet, and can be used to find all sorts of interesting things. Today, we'll learn how to use Shodan to find everything from webcams to boats on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In order to understand how Shodan works, it's useful to think about how search engines work in general. Websites like Google, Yandex, or Ask Jeeves will periodically go through all the available websites they can find using a spider, and take the results, indexing them in a useful way for people who are running searches. Now, Shodan works in a similar fashion. However, instead of websites, it's looking for every available port on the internet, meaning it's going around searching every possible IP address and every possible port uh, address, trying to identify whether or not it's open and available. Now what that means is it's able to actually identify all these different devices that are connected directly to the internet. And that doesn't mean that your home computer is going to show up. What it means is your router probably will, so if you've port forwarded anything like a webcam, then it means it will probably almost definitely show up on a Shodan search. Now, you can find a surprising amount of things on Shodan, and the scary thing is most of these devices do not ever change their uh, default password, meaning there's a lot of things you can automate to go after devices shared directly on the internet using default passwords, which don't really even require you to do a search yourself. Now, part of the beauty of Shodan is that the Python module is scriptable, so you can do all sorts of things with it and even use a command line interface that goes a bit beyond the web interface that you might be familiar with. Today, we're going to be taking an initial look at the web interface, the command line interface, and understand a little bit what we can do when we get into scripting Shodan into maybe Python script. In order to use this, you'll just need a web browser, but it helps to have Python installed if you want to use the command line interface. After that, we should be ready to start. Now, today we're going to get started with Shodan, but I'm going to assume that you are kind of a beginner or maybe you haven't used this for its ultimate goal, which is more actually just scripting, uh, attacking vulnerable devices so that you don't have to search for them in the first place manually. Now, the ultimate implementation of this is basically developers being able to identify a particular type of vulnerability in a particular type of device and then writing a script that automatically searches for all the ones that are currently connected to the internet and then going after them. So Shodan has been revolutionary for security researchers, and that's because it allows you to search for very specific types of devices and find them all over the world. So if there's a vulnerability that affects like, let's say one type of hardware, that could only be a couple of different thousand devices. But if you're getting a device or uh, a uh, vulnerability that affects maybe an operating system like Windows XP or something, then suddenly you can get maybe even hundreds of thousands of devices all over the world that could be uh, vulnerable and accessed in kind of a roundabout fashion by Shodan. So how that works is that in order to access all these vulnerable devices, we first need to know where they are. So we can of course scan ourselves, but it's much more convenient to have a third party do all this work for us. So using Shodan is a really good way to be able to understand what's out there on the internet without needing to do the searching yourself. You can think of it kind of as uh, somebody who's going around constantly knocking on doors and being like, hey, who lives here? Who's here? What's up? Which doors are open? And then providing a map so that anybody who's curious can figure out without needing to actually go there themselves what's going on. And that can mean that if you're doing port forwarding on something like your webcam or something like that, then it can appear on the search engine because you're exposing it directly to the internet and when Shodan comes knocking, your router will reply with all the information about what's connected. So. In order to get started, I highly recommend that as uh, you see I'm connected to South Africa, um, you don't do this directly from your own IP address. You're going to want to connect to Tor or a VPN and make sure that you're only connecting to things that you uh, have authorization to, but if you happen to drop into a webcam and you just don't know where it is and there's no password on it, then it's probably okay, but you probably just to be safe don't want it routing back to your uh, IP address anyway. So take precautions and make sure you're not directly accessing this. And also check out one of our um, videos on 
URL tracking and how you can be tracked with uh, tools like Grabify or Canary Tokens, because uh, it's a good education on how you can be tracked no matter uh, kind of what you do in these circumstances when you're making web requests. So again, before you get started with this, please make sure um, you're hiding yourself at least a little bit because you don't want to leave your presence all over logs all over the world and look like you're some sort of big shot. So, all right. Let's get started. So understanding the way to use uh, this sort of tool comes down to being a good searcher. So how are we gonna go about and craft a good search query? Um, it's kind of the same way that when you're running a Google search, if you just type something in, Google is going to try to interpret it as best it's can, as it can, but it's much more powerful if you know the right commands to use. Now, a little secret I want to share is that if you're looking for interesting ways to use Shodan, you can simply go ahead and click on uh, Twitter. <laughs> and again, I follow this stuff all the time, so I'll frequently kind of um, tweet these. So if you want to check them out, you can also follow me as well. But uh, here you can see that we have different little stubs that are being shared by the community that will allow you to find different um, uh, devices. And these are kind of shared all the time as security researchers find different things that are shared on Shodan. So if you want to be able to kind of be on the bleeding edge of what's happening with Shodan, uh, you'll find a lot on Twitter when it comes to researchers sharing little strings. So how does this work? Let's go ahead and go to a device that I've discovered. Now this is in um, a, a river. So initially it's a little suspicious until we see that, hey, this is actually a satellite a device that's connected to a boat. So how did how did we get to a boat? How did we get here? Well, in order to find devices like a boat, we can type something in that allows us to differentiate them from all the other devices on the internet. In this case, VSAT will give us a list of satellite systems that have a login page or a configuration that has that word in it, allowing us to say, hey, this is a satellite system. So next, we can also differentiate things down a little bit further. And in my example, I also included a port number, port 80, which allows us to maybe just look for things that are hosting a webcam or something very straight up and easy to access. Now I'm going to run the search. And this is what you can do as soon as you just kind of log into Shodan, which is accomplished by going to shodan.io and creating a free account. Now here you can see there's a bunch of different things that are reporting Satlink, which means this is a satellite system. And that's really interesting because it means that we can possibly uh, get into something that's satellite connected and moving all over the world, which is truly, uh, truly interesting. So let's take a look at, uh, this is just a random uh, VSAT link. And we can see here, their ports 23, 80 and 161 are open. So again, we just typed in something that we know is connected to satellite networks, VSAT, and we started getting satellite kind of devices. And we ended up here looking at the various ports that are open and a little bit of a uh, grab from what the URL header is or from the HTTP header. So now if we want to actually check this out, of course, with our VPN enabled, we can just take the IP address that we've scanned and see, of course, port 80 is open. So we don't need to specify that, but if this was port 81, we would have to specify that and then we can just try to go to it and see what happens. Now, um, it's probably gonna ask us for a password. And uh, in some cases, it will not. And in this case, it doesn't, meaning we have direct access to um, a satellite network of some sort. So you can see that this is a problem because this is obviously hosted on a boat and through a little bit of digging around we can see uh okay network ha something homdel um and then in the configuration we can see more information that probably will lead us to who actually owns this device and in some cases we can even see the longitude we can upload firmware meaning we could make this a zombie and kind of make it follow us around uh, and do what we want. We could route traffic through this satellite device. And in some cases, if there's a vulnerability, we can even do things like get into the, uh, the navigation system of the boat and traverse a little deeper so that we eventually not only know where this device is located physically on a map, but could even influence that location by getting it to maybe uh, uh, move or, or have the wrong readings. Now, all right, we see here that there is a system contact and we see there's a company name. And when we go to that company, oops, that's not what we want. There we go. We see that uh, this is a company that makes satellite equipment. 
So now we know that we are in some sort of, oh, here we go. In fact, we are in this VSAT system somewhere because they have not bothered to add a uh, login page. Now, as you can see, we're actually logged into the satellite device because they never managed to set a password, which is uh, really not good because anybody can basically get into this and upload firmware, which could allow it to do all sorts of bad stuff. Now, in order to figure this out, uh, let's say that there was a password. We could simply go ahead and look at the default uh, password in the setup guide. So when you encounter something like this, you can usually just look up the error page. Usually when you fail to log in something, it'll give you uh, some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of uh, like login page or something else. So let's go ahead and take an example. Uh, in this case, we're going to search for webcams. So how do you search for a webcam? Well, there's two different ways. First, you can just type in uh, webcam. And you can generally assume that webcams will have maybe something in the string. You see, did I just run webcam? That tells you, hey, this is a webcam. So here we can see there's a port 8081. And if we try to go to it, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, like this. There's probably going to be a login portal. And usually the login portal uh, will respond to the uh, username admin and either admin again or password. We can just type admin password. Who knows if that'll work? Probably not. But if we press cancel, then hey, boom, we get this unauthorized authorization required and then index.asp. So we have a little bit more information. Now, more useful would be maybe giving us something like the manufacturer. Now, the manufacturer, which sometimes we can also find in one of these strings, will allow us to find the default password. And most of the time, if you want to get into something like this, you can just attempt to log in. Here we go. We have another 8080. We copy this over. We paste it. And then we attempt to log in. Doesn't really matter if we succeed or fail, provided we're able to grab Oh my God, there's no password. Okay, well, that's not entirely um, surprising, but uh, either way, uh, this doesn't even ask to let anyone in, so weird. Um, so here you can see we're, we're controlling some sort, of, some sort of recorder and camera. We've got night vision and some other stuff, um, which is great. Um, again, don't know where the system is connected to. I was trying to just show you how uh, you could look at the brand, but it seems as though we can just go ahead and actually control this device wholesale without entering any password at all, which kind of highlights why Shodan is something that can be powerful. All right, so now that we've managed to um, get into a number of different things that we really didn't, oh, oh, here we go. Now we can actually see what's going on. So here we are in um, some sort of system. We can click on night vision. Oh, and now, <laughs> now that we wanna turn on the night vision, it's serious about security. So we can type in, Admin, 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 password. And between those two, uh, we have the majority of different devices will work. Um, a lot of people just don't even bother to set this. But if it doesn't work, then generally what you can do is look up the type of device and then if you can find just the setup uh, or instructional manual, it'll just say the default password and you can try that. Okay, so this is pretty cool, but what else can we do? Well, another example I found is this webcam in, oh, we've got some activity, some web, this webcam in Germany. So in this case, we were just looking for this string, CGI bin guest image.html. And if I go to showdown, I can type this in. And this request should be enough to start bringing up webcams all over the world. Now, this particular brand will just have this HTML file served up as a way for people to log in, but it's enough to identify it all over the internet. So if I had a uh, vulnerability for this particular type of webcam, I could use a search to basically find it everywhere it exists when it's directly connected online. So, of course, the expression of that is we end up getting something like this, a connected web camera that might allow us to see into an area we're not supposed to, or even access a system and then use it to route traffic or do other sorts of bad stuff. So let's take another step into Shodan and see what we can do with the command line interface. 
Well, using Shodan is really easy. And if you go ahead and type Shodan GitHub, you'll see that there's a really easy plugin for Python. Now, Python is an amazing language to write Shodan, uh, to use the Shodan library in because it allows us to script very simple things. And you can see this quick start script. As soon as you get an API key, you can really start to do a lot in your code. Now, one of the attractive things is if you have Python installed, you can go ahead and install the uh, command line version of Shodan by just typing pip install Shodan. And it should go ahead and install all the necessary libraries. And from there, you can just type Shodan and you're good to go. Now, an example that I did before is if you want to query information about a host, in this case, I'm going to query 189-201-128-250. We can get information about um, the host we want to investigate without even needing to use the command line at all. Oh, sorry, without even needing to go to the web interface at all. Now, as soon as this connects, I should be able to query this host and we will get most of the information Shodan has about this host, so we can make determinations about where it is, in this case, Mexico, uh, the host names, and the fact that it it's vulnerable to um, the Heartbleed vulnerability. So because we can also see the ports that are open and some other fingerprints, we can generally determine what this device is, where it's located, and what it might be vulnerable to, which is exactly the attention of Shodan when it comes to running searches between the command line interface and then running different searches in the direct uh, in the direct web interface, you can find virtually anything you're looking for. So if you're looking for various tips, I again advise you to take a look on Twitter for various trending vulnerabilities that have been tied to a string where you can find a whole bunch of maybe webcams or something that all have the same maybe burned in login that nobody can even change. So Shodan is an amazing tool for this sort of thing, and I definitely recommend you check it out. In this case, we're just doing a little bit of uh, just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can search and find. But once you get more advanced, you can integrate this into your scripts and write things that are truly dynamic and integrate search functions into finding devices and automatically exploiting them. Shodan is an incredible tool for security researchers, and while we've just scratched the surface, there's a number of things you can do with a paid account and with Python scripting that allow you to take Shodan even further. Now, although this is super powerful, I do recommend you exercise caution when, ac when accessing devices that you locate on Shodan, because depending on which device you're accessing and the country that you're in, you could get in a lot of trouble for accessing a device without authorization. If you want to learn more about Shodan, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any thoughts on future episodes, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. But that's all we have for this episode. We'll see you next time.